The Gympie Goldfields, located in southeast Queensland in Australia, are part of a broader geological structure known as the New England Origin. The Gympie Goldfields are the result of a series of geological processes that took place over hundreds of millions of years. From the initial deposition of marine sediments in a geosyncline to the complex tectonic interactions involving subduction, volcanic activity and mountain building, each step played a crucial role in concentrating gold into economically significant deposits. The hydrothermal systems, driven by the heat of rising magma, deposited gold in quartz veins, creating the rich mesothermal gold deposits that have made Gympie a notable gold mining region. Gympie is one of the closest gold fields to Brisbane. The Gympie goldfields were discovered in 1867. The amount of gold extracted from the Gympie goldfields is quite substantial. Over its mining history, the goldfield produced more than 3.5 million ounces of gold. The discovery of gold by James Nash in 1867 triggered a gold rush. The initial years saw a rapid influx of miners and the establishment of a thriving mining town. During this period, gold was primarily extracted from alluvial deposits, which is gold that is found in riverbeds and streams. Nash found gold in the alluvial deposits of the Mary River and its tributaries. While many nuggets were found in the Gympie goldfields, the exact record of the largest nuggets can be sparse due to the historical nature of the gold rush. However, some notable nuggets include the Curtis Nugget, which is one of the most famous gold nuggets found in Gympie. This nugget weighed approximately 975 ounces, which is 27.7 kilograms, and it was discovered in 1868. It is one of the largest nuggets ever found in Queensland. Throughout the late 19th century, numerous other large nuggets were discovered in the region. Reports from the time mention several nuggets weighing over 100 ounces, which is 2.8 kilograms. Even today, gold prospectors in Gympie occasionally find gold nuggets using modern metal detectors. While the major gold rush days are over, the region's history and remaining gold deposits continue to attract hobbyists and small-scale miners. Alluvial gold is typically found as nuggets and flakes that have been eroded from the primary gold-bearing rock and transported by water. The ease of finding gold in riverbeds attracted thousands of prospectors to the area, leading to a gold rush. As the alluvial gold became scarcer, miners began to extract gold from deeper underground veins. The development of underground mining techniques allowed for the extraction of gold from quartz reefs. This period saw significant gold production, with numerous mines operating in the area. By the early 20th century, the easily accessible gold deposits were largely depleted, leading to a decline in mining activity. However, technological advancements and improved mining techniques allowed for intermittent mining activities throughout the 20th century. These activities focused on extracting gold from lower grade ores and remnants of older workings. In recent years, there has been renewed interest in the Gympie goldfields, with modern exploration and mining companies investigating the potential for new gold deposits. Advances in mining technology and exploration techniques have the potential to uncover additional resources in the region. But how did the goldfields here form? Well, this all somewhat started with the New England origin. I say somewhat for reasons that will become clear shortly. The New England origin was initially shaped by the deposition of thick marine sequences during the Devonian and Carboniferous periods, about 419 to 299 million years ago. These sequences were deposited in a geosyncline, a large-scale depression in the Earth's crust that collected sediments. If you watched our video on the Hidden Volcanic Arc in South Australia, I go into more depth on geosynclines and their formation. You can find a link to that video in the description. The Gympie region's rocks tell a fascinating story of how the Earth's plates have moved and interacted over millions of years. Imagine the Earth's crust as a giant puzzle made of pieces called tectonic plates. Sometimes these plates collide. When an oceanic plate, which is denser and thinner, hits a continental plate, which is thicker and less dense, the oceanic plate gets pushed underneath in a process called subduction. As the oceanic plate moves under the continental plate, it scrapes off sediments. Loose materials like sand, mud and small rocks and pieces of oceanic crust. These scraped off materials get piled and squeezed against the edge of the continental plate, forming a mix of rocks known as an accretionary wedge. The rocks in this accretionary wedge are not just piled up neatly, they are twisted, folded and broken because of the immense pressure and movements during subduction. This makes them look very complex and jumbled, like a crumpled piece of paper. Some of these rocks are cleaved, which means they have split into thin layers due to intense pressure. Melange structures are areas where different types of rocks are mixed together chaotically, resembling a rocky stew. 
To put it simply, the Gympie region's geological formation can be visualised as a conveyor belt where the oceanic plate moves underneath the continental plate, scraping off loose material and rocks from the ocean floor. These materials get squished and piled up at the edge of the continental plate, much like how snow piles up in front of a snowplow. Due to the constant movement and immense pressure, these piled up materials get twisted and folded in many different ways. Imagine trying to push and squeeze a stack of papers. They wouldn't stay flat, but would crumple and fold. In this chaotic mix, you get a variety of rocks all jumbled together. Some rocks get split into layers, while others are mixed together like ingredients in a rocky salad. This process of subduction and the resulting formation of complex rock structures are crucial in understanding how gold deposits and other minerals come to be in regions like Gympie. The intense geological activity creates conditions that can concentrate valuable minerals, making them accessible for mining. As a side note, if you're enjoying this video, please click the like button to help YouTube recommend it to others. Consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon to be notified of when we upload. We also have a Patreon if you'd like to support the channel, only if you have the means of course, and you can find that both in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Whilst associated with the New England origin, the Gympie province has its own designation. It has been interpreted as including components of an evolving volcanic arc that collided with the eastern margin of the Australian continent in the early to middle Triassic. This is why I said it's somewhat related to the New England origin, as the Gympie region actually developed outside of continental Australia as a standalone volcanic arc in the open ocean. It was only during the Hunter Bowen orogeny that it became accreted to mainland Australia. It's likely that the New England origin produced the magma needed to form the arc, but it was a separate entity that formed some distance away from Australia at its beginning stages. During the early to middle Paleozoic era, around 541 to 298 million years ago, subduction of the Paleo-Pacific Oceanic Plate beneath the Australian continent led to the formation of volcanic arcs and the emplacement of granitic batholiths. This subduction was a key driver of the geological processes that formed the gold deposits in the region. The rising magmas carried gold and other minerals, which were deposited in the crust as the magmas cooled and crystallised. The Gympie region still exhibits geological features characteristic of ancient volcanic arc systems. The presence of volcanic rocks such as basalts and andesites indicates past volcanic activity associated with the volcanic arc. As the oceanic plate subducted beneath the continental plate, it generated significant heat and pressure. This caused partial melting of the subducted plate and the overlying mantle wedge, creating magma. The magma, being buoyant, rose through the Earth's crust, leading to volcanic activity at the surface. This volcanic activity formed a chain of volcanoes, similar to the modern-day Pacific Ring of Fire. The rising magma also intruded into the crust, forming large bodies of igneous rocks known as batholiths. These igneous intrusions played a crucial role in the mineralization processes that eventually led to the formation of gold deposits in the region. A major tectonic event, the Hunter Bowen orogeny, occurred during the late Permian to early Triassic periods, about 260 to 250 million years ago. This event was characterized by intense folding, faulting, and metamorphism, significantly impacting the structure and mineralization of the Gympie goldfields, and it led to the accretion of it to mainland Australia. There are major faults in Gympie, which acted as conduits for gold-bearing fluids to rise and deposit auriferous quartz into the fractured Permian Age sedimentary bedrock. The emplacement of granitic batholiths during the Siluro-Devonian period, approximately 425 to 400 million years ago, initiated hydrothermal systems. These systems involved the circulation of hot mineral-rich fluids through fractures and faults in the crust, leading to the deposition of gold in quartz veins and lodes. The hydrothermal fluids were primarily modified meteoric and magmatic fluids, which leached gold from the surrounding rocks and concentrated it into economically viable deposits. The Gympie goldfields are characterized by mesothermal quartz gold base metal sulfide deposits. These deposits formed at moderate temperatures of between 230 to 350 degrees Celsius and depths typically associated with mountain building events and hydrothermal fluid activity. The gold deposits in Gympie share similarities with other significant goldfields, such as Chartered Towers and the Motherload deposits of California. To summarize, the formation of the Gympie goldfields involves subduction and subsequent accretion of oceanic materials onto the continental margin. Emplacement of granitic batholiths and associated volcanic activity provided heat and fluids for hydrothermal systems. The circulation of mineral-rich fluids through fractures and faults led to gold deposition in quartz veins. 
Multiple phases of tectonic activity, including the Hunter Bowen orogeny, contributed to the structural deformation and mineralization of the region. As time goes on, I intend to cover many other goldfields across Australia and the world and explain the geological processes that led to their formation. I hope you found this as interesting as I do, and as always, thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started a second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon, or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.